the whole world is here in Davos, and one of the questions for 2023 that everyone wants to know is what's going on with the U.S. consumer and, and how long can they hold up? Yes. You've got a good read. Well, I think they're a little nervous. And, you know, rightly so. There's a lot of change and you don't know what the Fed's going to do. And people are reading about losing jobs. And every time you open your phone, you see another news story about layoffs. So I think people are just standing still waiting to see what's going to happen next. But the consumer definitely is still shopping, and they love products that are great value, um, quality products that last. And I'm very pleased, you know, because we're in a business that is more resilient because people love their homes. I mean, people shopped a lot in the pandemic. We talked to, we've been talking about that. Yeah. But the truth is um, their homes are their biggest asset. And so many people started a project that has not been completed. And usually, you know, you start a project, you finish a project, and then you furnish the house. And so there's resilience in the customer in our business because of the business that we're in and the products that we sell. It's surprising to me because furniture has been one of the weaker categories in some of the retail and consumer data because mm -hmm. we all spent a lot mm -hmm. on our homes during COVID. Mm -hmm. So you're saying there's still a tailwind? Well, the truth is now, you know, after COVID, everybody was so excited to go out. And don't we love to go out and go to restaurants and go to travel. But the truth is, when you get that bill, it's really expensive. And so I think now that people are more conscious about their budget at all levels, the reality is that the home, being in your home is the best deal. You can have your friends over, you know, you, you, you get a lot of satisfaction about redoing a room. And so the home continues to be an important place for people top of their mind, even if they're going to spend a little bit less than they did last year. Are you baking in a recession? Is that what you see from the consumer? You know, who knows? I think because everybody's talking about it, I wonder, is that really what's going to happen? You know, I tend to try to see something else in the future. I don't, I don't, I'm not an economist. I don't know, but I know that there is definitely some fear and there's a pullback right now. When you talk to anybody here in Davos, that's what's on everyone's mind. So, of course, that's going to have an effect on spending. You mentioned inflation. So the inflation is in the services part of the economy right now. What, what's happening in the furniture category? Is it deflation, disinflation? Well, let's start with the cost side. So the good news is that costs are coming down. The bad news is there's still the big costs from last year still moving through the supply chain and moving through the balance sheets. Dre, demurrage, higher costs of product, but those costs are coming down and the customer should start to see and the, the companies should start to re see relief at the end of this year, next year. Promotional environment though, as you try to unload you know, inventory? The promotional environment has always been wicked. And it depends on you know which customer is serving where your brand is, but there's there's a lot of people who've been running you know site-wide deals all the way through. And then there's people like us they've decided that we're going to run markdowns on products where we're overstocked. But on our best sellers, you know, we can command the price because of the, the value quality design relationship. What about the supply chain? Is it, is it still stuck presenting challenges or is that cleared up? It's better. It's a lot better. I, I, you know, last year was really difficult. There's some, still, still some residual um, things, uh, but people are mostly back in stock. Now it's just getting the right balance of inventory across products and across geos. What about China? Because you do have production mm -hmm. there. I mean, China's a great place to do business. It's just that, um, you know, the tariffs made everything really expensive. But we have great manufacturing partners there that have high quality. Um, we moved a lot out when that happened, and we sort of stayed in the same place with that percent to total. Um, you know, we've worked on really diversifying not just away from China, but everywhere, so that we're not overly reliant in one place. So that's ongoing process. Yes. China, and China is still a good place to do business? It is. Or? It's. I mean, there's been, you know, the ups and downs, and you, you feel, you know, really empathetic for what's happened over there with the people. Um, but the, the quality of the product in the places that we do business is amazing. How else have, have consumers changed in terms of their behavior and habits post-COVID that you've noticed? You know, that's a really good question and hard to say. You know, I think um, consumers have shifted more online. They had to. There weren't stores open for a while. So, you know, when you, when you learn how to shop online, you don't forget. And there was a lot of consumers who never did that before. They weren't confident. They didn't even, you know, they, they weren't confident 
in shopping online, and they've stayed shopping online through. Now we're also seeing it's great to have retail stores. I mean, our retail stores are thriving, and customers like to get out and see things and touch things. And certainly in the home furnishings business, it's, it's good to touch and sit on the sofa and make sure it's comfortable. So we are very fortunate to have a really good mix of both. If we go into a broader consumer discretionary slowdown or recession, which of your brands, because you have very distinct brands, which one is typically more resilient? It's a hard question. It depends on where the slowdown is. But, we, you know, we're a life stage business as well, as well as a home business. When you think about it, I mean, people are going to buy cribs for their babies. They're, you know, the, the, mon monogrammed baby chairs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, Common it's, present. I, it's great that we have a portfolio of brands. It definitely gives us more resilience and we do serve a little bit more of a wider range of customers than a lot of people with a single brand.